Let's dig a little more deeply into the Simply Music method. Firstly, we focus on several arenas, several genres of music uh, throughout the method as a whole. There's a significant focus on classical music. There's a focus on contemporary styles, which include the arena of composition and developing arrangement. Uh, we also include blues and jazz, uh, contemporary music. In addition to that, we have a really significant focus on the arena of accompaniment, an absolutely brilliant skill. It's the most wonderful thing to be able to give to beginning students. For those of you who are watching, just let me say a little bit about uh, accompaniment if you're not familiar or, with this already. Accompaniment isn't so much playing the song. So if I were to play like Happy Birthday and you heard the tune and I was playing the tune of the song, that's not so much accompaniment. Accompaniment is more if you were singing it and I was playing the, pia the piano in the background. Or if it was at a, you know, the, the ball game and the singer came out to sing the national anthem and I was playing in the background. That's the role of accompaniment. It's the ability to equip you to provide the support for another musician who's singing the melody or playing the melody with their sax or trumpet or violin or you know, whatever the case may be. It's a brilliant skill to have. We want our students to be equipped with comprehensive accompaniment skills from their very first lessons. Because one of the things that's brilliant about it is accompaniment is so easy. And once you learn a few amazingly simple basics, it equips you with this musical Lego kit. Literally, it gives you these simple pieces that you can assemble to build a song. You can deconstruct it, assemble it in a different way and have another song. Deconstruct and assemble it in another way and have song after song after song, literally opening the door, literally, to hundreds and thousands of pieces that you can play in the accompaniment style. It's an incredibly valuable uh, arena to be immersed in and we want our beginning students to be into accompaniment from the get-go. So, talking to the educators right now. In order to develop a facility, a fluency with accompaniment, our students need to know their chords. So let's set a project. Let's say the, this is the project. I want my beginning student to know all of the major chords in each of the 12 major keys. So they've got to know the 12 major chords. Now there's a number of ways that we could go about doing that. We could look at conventional approaches. We could say, well, let's take the first and the third and the fifth of the scale, which means they need to understand scales in order to be able to do that. That's one approach. We could say, let's uh, stack a major third and a minor third on top of one another. So we need almost like a, a, a harmonic understanding in order to be able to do that. We could just say, let's take the first, third, fifth, the tonic, the median, and the dominant. So we need an understanding of the structure of scale. Well, none of that's, all of that's valuable, all of that's accurate, but none of it gets immediacy into the hands of students from a playing based perspective. And this is what we want to do. And this is one of the really potent, powerful uh, components of the Simply Music uh, program as a whole our ability to see and recognize and identify shapes and patterns and be able to turn that into musicianship. So here's the project. Let's learn all of the 12 major chords. I'm going to move fairly quickly through this, but all of you that have any musical background whatsoever, you'll get it very quickly. For those of you who are total novices, you'll see it immediately. And if you're in lessons with our program, you'll be doing this within a few weeks of being a total beginner. Let's have a look at the page. Project, learn the 12 chords. I've written this out on my screen. On your screen, you're seeing a representation of C, D, E, F, G, A, and B, <coughs> representing the seven white keys. And then we have B flat, A flat, G flat, E flat, and D flat, representing the five black keys. So for now, I said we're not talking about scale degrees, we're not talking about intervals. We're actually looking for shapes and patterns. And you know what's great about this? This is as simple as playing that child's game, connect the dots, join the dots. Let's have a look exactly how it unfolds on the keyboard. I'm just going to use rudimentary fingering just so it's clear for you visually. I'm going to play a C chord. Now I'm just going to show the students a C chord and what I want them to see is if, that if this was a dot and this was a dot and this was a dot and we connected the dots, we would see that we would have a straight line and that's all I want the student to see. That the C chord is what will, it goes from here to, across to here and I'm going to call it a straight line. And in my diagram, I'm going to just represent it with a straight line. Skipping ahead, 
what we're going to discover is that the F major chord likewise has exactly the same shape and it's represented as a straight line. We also would discover that a G chord has exactly the same shape and it's represented as a straight line. Good news is that three of the twelve, a quarter of the project, has been learned with one shape. Let's keep going. Let's have a look at D. D plays from here to here to here. So we see these three notes here and if we were to connect the dots what we'd see is that it draws a triangle. Starts here and draws a triangle. What we would discover with E is it is exactly the same. E draws a triangle. What we would discover with A is A is exactly the same. A draws a triangle. Good news is we've done six of the twelve chords. Only two shapes, a straight and a triangle. Really good news. Let's keep going. B goes from white to black to black. It's almost like it has a curve to it. Let's represent that on our page. B has a curve. Seven of the twelve, three shapes. Let's move on to the black key chords because this is where it gets super interesting. We'll start with B flat. B flat starts here and it unfolds onto these notes. We see now that it's actually a curve, but when we represent it in a diagram, we can see that it's an upside down curve. It's exactly the same shape as B, but it's been flipped. Well, heck, given that the brain's a pattern seeking device, it uses those patterns for both recognition and prediction. Let's move on and see if we can't find more to predict. If I have a look at A-flat, A-flat is these two black notes and this white note in the middle. We can see now that it's an upside down triangle. It's the same shape as A, but it's upside down. Well, from a predictive perspective, what do you think is going to happen with D-flat and E-flat? If D and E are triangles? Exactly. We see that E-flat is an upside down triangle and D-flat is an upside down triangle. Let's see them on the keyboard. Here is our E-flat as an upside down triangle and here is our D-flat as an upside down triangle. The only one remaining is G-flat. Well, if G is a straight line, what do you think G-flat is? Exactly, it's a straight line as well. This is awesome. I've been able to distill the 12 major chords into three simple shapes. Straight line, triangle, curve. Excellent. Not only that, Here's what's incredibly powerful. Bear in mind that I'm showing you now something that would unfold over a series of lessons. In any of these demonstration videos, I'm moving very quickly just to get to a point. The strategy, the actual unfolding of the curriculum, the way in which things are broken down into single thought processes, the way in which they're unfolded in the lesson plans, how it's all structured, how it's processed, the surrounding assignments that we provide, the musical application with the songs that they're learning to be able to grasp and comprehend any given component at any given time. This is done in a very scaffolded, uh, very carefully managed and very sensitively delivered approach. I'm moving very quickly, so remember that. But let's jump ahead and make an assumption. Let's assume that the students have had a week or two or three or four, whatever is needed, to be able to get these 12 absolutely solid. We're then going to introduce another component, another Simply Music strategy that I call inheriting. Inheriting, inheriting is wonderful. Inheriting is the ability to take an existing body of information Add one piece, one new component to that existing body of information, but massively expand its application. Take something we know, add one thing to it, and as a result, we can now have this whole new arena of application. That's inheriting. Let's have a look at how we use inheriting with these three shapes. I'm going to move over to a, another diagram here for you. I'm going to represent the three shapes by using one shape. Now, this is not the same conversation here now. We've moved to a different conversation. I'm no, not, I'm no longer talking about the triangle chords. In this conversation, I'm using the triangle symbol as a representative of all the 12 chords of the three shapes, the flat, the triangle, and the curve. So it's just a, a reminder, just a cue. Looking at our diagram, let's say this point here represents the bottom note of our chord. Let's say this note here represents the middle note of our chord and let's say this note here represents the top. So if it was one of our straights, this would be the bottom, this would be the middle, this would be the top. If it was one of our triangles, this is the bottom, this is the middle, this is the top. 
If it's one of our curves, this is the bottom, this is the middle, this is the top. Let's say, for example, now what we want to do is learn all of the minor keys. Look at all there is we need to do. Go over to your diagram. We're just going to go to our middle note, and what we know is this. Just take the middle note and move it down to the very next note. Move it down one half step. That's the only instruction. If your students know their three shapes, they know how they're positioned, all they need to do is begin to position themselves to a major chord and make a little inheriting adjustment, and they've inherited the minor chord. So we would see C, the middle note comes down to the very next note, whether it's white or black. We now have C minor. D we knew was a triangle. Take the middle note, move it down a half step to give us D minor. A triangle, move down to E minor. A straight, move down to F minor. A straight, move down to e G minor. A triangle, move down to A minor. A curve, middle note comes down. I've inherited all of the minor chords. Now here's what's brilliant about this. Just leaping ahead a little bit. We can teach our beginning students how to have a command, a physical command, a playing based command that they play in real time with real songs. We can give our students the ability to have a mastery and command over every major, minor, major seventh, dominant seventh, minor seventh, augmented, suspended, ninth, eleventh chord, thirteenth chord in every key using those three shapes represented by that one triangle there just by learning how to make incremental adjustments to particular points on the shape. It's fantastic. At a practical level, how does this translate? Well, you can imagine how little time it would take for a beginning student to get a familiarity with, let's just say, the straight line chords. Let's just say C, F and G. Well, what we know for a fact is that there's a world of songs that are written around those three chords and what it means is that our students can very immediately, very quickly, very at a very satisfying level, get into playing accompaniment pieces that they can start to share with family and friends. I'll just give you an example. I've written out a few chords here that will come up on the screen for you. <clears throat> this is the order of the chords for a very famous traditional piece that's known through a lot of the world. It's a piece called Amazing Grace. If I play these chords in this order, and I have someone who's singing the melody, someone that I can accompany, we're going to get a complete orchestration of the Amazing Grace piece. One of the things we do with our students is once we have learned the chords, we move into something that we call a ratio. And a ratio is quite simple. If, uh, how it works is this. If I'm playing a C chord in my right hand, then I'm just going to play a C single note in my left hand. My ratios are either what I would call a one to one, a one to two, or a one to three, most commonly. And here's what I mean by that. In a one to one ratio, both the chord, the left hand and the right hand play once. In a one to two ratio, the left hand plays once, the right hand plays once, but the right hand plays a second time. In a one to three ratio, it's exactly as it sounds. They come together for once, the right hand plays a second and a third time. Looking at the keyboard, here's a one to one ratio. Just going C, coming down to F, and back to C. And in this instance, I'm just sort of following through the order of the chords that you've seen on the screen. Let me do the same thing now, but apply a one to three ratio and follow along with the chords that are on the screen. So it would be C with one, two, three. And again, it's one, two, three. Then it comes to F, which we know is a straight line. And I'm coming back to the C. And in every, one, every time there's a chord symbol, I am playing the chord with the ratio of one to three. This gives us amazing grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. So, so on and so forth. It means that we've got students playing, accompanying others, playing great sounding songs, knowing these chords so quickly. How? From three simple shapes. The accompaniment process is awesome. If you see there's value in the recognition of this and exploring this and sharing it with your students, please do. And maybe just acknowledge the source where it came from. I hope you enjoy this. I hope it's provided some value. See you next time.